de Border Sessions in Den Haag, Theater aan het Spui. Een nieuwe gast aan mijn tafel. Please introduce yourself. Steve Levine, I'm the author of The Powerhouse. And uh, when you ex have to explain to someone uh, you meet at the party what it is you do, what what you tell? Well, I'm a journalist, so I, I write about geopolitics from, from the perspective of energy. And so I, I look at what's going on around the world with energy, anything from oil all the way over to technology, uh, batteries and electric cars. And I try to see when when a lot of electric cars are being sold or a big breakthrough is happening in batteries or a pipeline explodes, what are the, what's the geopolitical impact? Yeah. So Border Sessions is about the way technology uh, shapes our future. Um, in, 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 uh, do you feel your work is, is important uh, in that sense? Does it have, what does it have to do with the future? Yeah. So, <laughs> This is what drew me to uh, naturally. I'm 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 a former foreign correspondent. Uh, I, I you know I, I report normally from war zones and 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 pl places that seems to coincide with places that have oil and gas and uh -huh. and minerals. But um, but a few years ago, I was drawn to uh, the, a uh, this this new advent of electric cars coming back into. Uh, in, into the world and a desire to create a big breakthrough in batteries that made electric cars mainstream. That anyone could own one, that you could. Yeah, well, probably And then not, I could buy one. <laughs> that we won't buy a Tesla, but maybe no, something less. Small, yeah. Um, and, and, and so if these move out, if electric cars are created that don't cost 100,000 euros, um, that cost, say, 25,000 euros or 20,000 euros and 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 they're and they move into the mainstream and millions are, are are sold this will in my view this has the greatest impact on our future than any other currently being uh, devised technology and the, and the ways is you know think about it in terms of Climate change, yeah. in terms of uh, w which is a geopolitical impact on the tallest order, but also in in terms of who's powerful in the world. OPEC countries, mm -hmm. Russia, the countries that rely on oil wealth for the for their influence in the in the in the world, yeah. they would be weakened. Yeah. So, so you, if, if, uh, looking at it from that perspective, you would uh, be happy if it if if it would move into the mainstream. Yeah, I think. Well, I think that there are big pluses on the environmental side. Yeah. On the geopolitical side, there are pluses and minuses. For example, if you do have countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar weakened, you can already see the instability that's all over the Middle East si since the Arab Spring. Yeah. It gets a lot worse because though uh, su suddenly the countries that haven't been struck by an Arab Spring don't have the money to to make the social payments that have kept their people you know a bit calm yeah and you have chaos you know a yeah. lot a, a lot more chaos that could last decades and and that's not something necessarily favorable but i think it's something that that would happen yeah yeah so it's yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um um so um how long do you think it will take for it to, to become mainstream? Because I, I can see that in the West it will, well, probably be fairly quick, but, uh, well, all over the world? Yeah. This, it, it's actually uncertain whether it's going to be. We're, we're, you're, you're not sure? No, no. No? We're, I'm not. It's, uh, and, and no one can be. No. Uh, so the, so what, what, what will, are the, the well, what, what does it need to be? Uh, become mainstream. You have to want to buy one. That's basically it. So uh, we're we're in a period. You know, I, I think when people talk about technology, they can become very enthusiastic. Both the the people who are creating the technology, and then the audience, the the people who are listening, and and that and that means consumers. It's it's one of those things that becomes almost an irrational force in the in the world uh -huh. and, and 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 I think that uh, with just technology generally but with this 
we have to keep keep our heads about us and 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 be sensible. We don't know if this is going to ha happen, but we are in a um, in a in a kind of a runway. If you think of it as a runway at an airport, and the 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 end of the runway is the end of this decade. And uh, what's happening is starting next year, but mainly 2017, 2018, 2019, a bunch of new electric cars. The 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 major car makers in the world. Uh, BMW and Volkswagen, mm -hmm. uh, Audi and Mercedes and, and GM and Tesla and Apple, the computer company, yeah. um, are all coming into the market with mainstream priced electric cars. And, and then the question will become, do people want to buy them? And, yeah. if, and if they do, if, if these end up being like the iPhone, then you have this new world that I'm describing. If they end up being like the last time that electric cars were, you know, there there was an attempt to bring them back, um, then we won't. No, but you're still looking at the at the at the process as uh, a car being something a person buys. Well, on the other hand, uh, you also see the movements where there's they uh, that's that's. Well, being told that we're going to have um, self-driven cars where you just get in a car and we just share the ride. Because when, when we were driving up here, we come from Amsterdam, you see all these cars with just one person in it uh, driving from Amsterdam to The Hague or to Rotterdam. Uh, isn't that old-fashioned? Shouldn't you, Don't you think that ch it, it needs much more change than that? Well, the, the uh, when, when entrepreneurs and the heads of governments decided, I mean, th this is a public policy issue, the presidents of 20 countries around the world have put public policy behind this whole I idea of a new electric car age. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, so that's about 2009, 2010. No one forecast that we were going to, that that was going to coincide with this big move into autonomous and self-driving cars. Yeah. But they dovetail, they align. Uh -huh. And so uh, not all, but a lot of the cars and uh, and a lot of the times when designers are creating these autonomous vehicles, they're thinking of electric cars or, 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 or partially electric cars. I think you can't stop that part of it, that mm. the part of this autonomous functionality of, uh, of shared vehicles, um, that it looks like that's happening, and and, and it's it, you know the chances are that we are heading into this new you know electric age with autonomous functionality. The thing is is uh, is I'm, I'm just cautioning that I'm I'm not in like an electric car activist. I'm, I'm an a, a <laughs> You're not observer. <laughs> yeah, no. and this is what I think. Yeah is happening but there is uncertainty about it yeah 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 so if you look deep in in your heart uh, uh, what what will the lo world look like in say 20 25 years uh, looking at uh, transportation yeah this the way that you formulated that question that's exactly the right way because what people don't uh, uh, usually don't take a, account of is all of the major electronic uh, electronics that we use smartphone laptop the 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 uh, 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 tablets all of these took about 25 or 30 years from the time the first mm -hmm. model came onto the market until they crossed the 50 percent line and in, in in terms of consumer ownership so if you look at electric cars the way you just framed it 25 30 years um, this is the way I see it. That's so why I see. Uh, um, Forty or fifty percent of the cars that are sold on the road, not owned on the road, because remember, people keep cars for thirty years, twenty. Long time. Well, yeah. well, anyway, cars stay around a long time. Yeah. But forty or fifty percent of the cars sold on the road are electric and autonomous in some way, not necessarily completely, you know, uh, uh, self-driving, but with autonomous functionality. Um, a lot less oil than has been projected is sold, and Russia and OPEC nations 
have been forced to, to, uh, to pivot how they run their economies. We, we may not recognize how, how the states of the Middle East are, are run. Russia is a tough nut. Let's see, uh, let's see what, uh, what happens with it. But I see it kind of as a, it's a generational uh, shift. And the, the shift is not just technological, it's a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. So how quickly we moved away from all of us reading newspapers with paper, and now almost no one. No, my everyone kids reads, don't. Read, yeah, don't, they want to read yeah, on a smartphone. Yeah. And 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 I I know. So I still read. Yeah. Paper. I yeah. still do yeah. as well. We're old. <laughs> but 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 young people when uh, when I, mean, I I think they look at paper. Well, you look at it, and then 30 minutes later, you throw it away in the trash can. Isn't that a waste? And, uh, and there's these language dead trees and all of that. I think that is how. They, not necessarily your children, but maybe your children, and certainly their children, are going to look at cars that are purely gasoline driven as some, some, something way from the past and wasteful. Something that's, that's almost disgusting. That how, why would you have a car yeah. that burns just gasoline? You have to have some, some kind of motive technology in the car that carries it that doesn't require just the the fuel it's going to be it it's going to be like that mm, mm. are you optimistic about the future yes i am yeah i am optimistic even I, with all the geopolitical uh, consequences and and changes yeah i am i think that we don't get there in a straight line i do see chaos uh, uh, um in the middle east more more of that but i also look i I lived in Central Asia for 11 years and in Afghanistan for three years. It's 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 a uh, it, it, these are great places and 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 people who who are filled with spirit and joy that that uh, we don't ourselves ordinarily see in places that are a lot richer. But the sad kind of truth about those places is that to get to stability. They need to go through a transition period. There, there is going to be in Afghanistan, for example, a longer period of war until they decide themselves what the society is going to look like, mm -hmm. and the Middle East too. And we can't decide it for them. No, no, no. But so you're still optimistic, yeah? It's I, I, I'm wondering about this because if if you see all the well, like the refugee problem at the, at the moment, which is, well, people don't stay there, well, a lot of them do, but they, they, they travel to Europe. Uh, all the, 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 the sentiment here is, is very negative. Uh, it, it doesn't, yeah, it, it, I think it's hard to, to find optimism. <laughs> and, well, and, and look at it like a transition period. It is, yes, and, and it's glib. I mean, it can sound glib to see it that way, but if you do take the long view, uh -huh. and and if if you love history, for example, and, and then then it does it look teaches. like a transition yeah. period, yeah. and and you're, Europe will figure it out. Yeah, it, it does look like a mess. Hundreds of thousands of migrants. Millions. How yeah. will yeah. Um, how will Europe absorb so many people? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel it's it's a it's a thing that that uh, well the Middle East and and Europe have to deal with themselves, or is it a world problem? Do you think America has to be involved as well? You know, I guess I I, I haven't put a lot of thought in into it in, into the migrant issue. Maybe yeah. I should ask you that that same yeah, question. Yeah, what well, I, <laughs> I think it's so difficult. It's really difficult. I don't know. No. Yeah, it, but but well, how did the re if you look at the origin of the refugee crisis, then it is an American issue, right? The mm. the the United States decided that it was going to uh, oust Saddam Hussein, and one thing leads to another, and then you 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 have the migrant crisis. I think that Europe could argue that yeah. to the United States. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> help. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's too complex, it probably. <laughs> and, and pretty far afield. Yeah. 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 One last question. Um, at the moment, you see a lot of people, um, well, people who are here at this festival, for instance, who are very into technology, uh, like you say, uh, well, uh, uh, they, they, they find it exciting, they see all the benefits, or they try to see the benefits. And on the other hand, you see a growing group, I think, of people who aren't into technology at all. They don't, they don't understand Facebook. They are well. They have a phone, but it's not really a smartphone. It, it seems like there's a, a growing gap between the technology haves and the technology have-nots. Do, do you see the same, or do you? And, and do you find it a problem? No, and I think I'm a have-not. Okay. So, so I, I. I I view these. I, I view the launches, for for example, uh, technology launches, as very curious uh, <laughs> phenomena. You know, these the, it's like uh, the Rolling Stones coming on stage. Now that is an inter th these are entertainers. But yeah. then you have Elon Musk, who is tr he's treated like a rock star, and and and, and I do I, I do think that he he. I view him on a different level from S Steve Jobs, for example. Um, I, I have trouble viewing the smartphone as, as truly a breakthrough technology. It is a phone. <laughs> it's a phone and that, that you can do a lot of neat stuff with, but it's not something that a, a lot of people own it, but it doesn't change the world. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where, you know, his, his vision was, you know, a well-designed technology you can put in your pocket. I think Musk is different. His vision Will really does, yeah, it really does change the world. Uh, uh, that's different. However, I still think it's weird. It's really weird. The 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 rollouts of these vehicles on these dark stages, and everyone's wearing black, and uh, and, and 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 you know. The bar and a lot of women with short skirts and the and the whole thing. It, it, it's it's strange for me. Uh, so I do look at uh, at the the technology um, and the all the accoutrements around the technology as kind of a show. Uh -huh. But if if the show plays on, what happens? This is what interests me. Yeah. And this is what you're going to talk about today. I think so. Yeah. Oké, okay. yeah. dank je wel. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> Goed, tot zover. Blijf kijken, straks een nieuwe gast.